Hello humans and fellow aliens, I'm Cepadia, and today we're going to be talking about half-time versus full-time versus double-time. What do these terms mean? How can we better understand them to use them or not use them in our music? Basically, how can we decide when to use them and why to use them? So it's actually going to be a pretty short one today. I'm not really going to be making a track. I'm just going to be giving you the examples of how to use them in context. Now let's get into it. Um, don't forget to subscribe and share and do all that stuff if you like this video. So, she, she. All right, I got my beer. I, I felt it was appropriate to have a beer because I'm gonna be talking about music theory concepts and I need to be sharp-minded, sharp uh, be on, on top of my mental game. So, what are these terms? Half-time, double-time, full-time, what do they mean? They are not a reference to time signature. They really are only terms used for common time or 4-4 four, four time. In a normal song, not a normal song, what's the word I'm looking for? In a general song, no, in music, got it. All right, in music, the count is normally divided or is normally given to a quarter note or for for my British viewers who are non-existent as of yet, uh, a crochet. I forgot it's British, not French. A crotchet, a crotchet. Bars are normally divided into crotchets. I apologize. Um, so they're split into four notes. Uh, this is one fourth right here in Ableton. I'm pointing at the screen. Why do I do that? That's the grid. That's normally what it's split up into. Of those notes, the bar is then divided into uh, what are called strong beats and weak beats. In a measure of 4-4, four, four, the strong beats are the 1 and the 3, and the weak beats are the 2 and the 4. A general drum pattern is to have the kicks on the strong beats and the snares on the weak beats. And we uh, we hear this all the time in music. And it, it allows uh, the listener to follow along in a pretty simple way. You kick, snare, kick, snare, strong, weak, strong, weak. You know how it is. So this is, I gotta stop pointing at the screen. This is what's known as full time. It's the standard subdivision of the bar. The quarter notes are given the beat. The strong beats are one and three. The weak beats are two and four. Half time is when the snare is put on the three instead of the two and the four, cutting in half the perceived time of uh, of the music. So as a listener, as a listener, these terms are actually pretty relative. You don't, a listener doesn't really need to know if this section of the song is in half time or if it's in full time, because all that they're paying attention to is where the strong and the weak beats hit. In half time, the strong beat is on the one and the weak beat is on the three. That's how it's perceived, at least. It's as perceived by the listener. In reality, because we haven't left the tempo that we're, that we're at, the strong and the weak beats are the same. They're just not being represented that way with the kick and the snare. And so this is what uh, full time and half time sound like next to each other. All right, so if half time is taking full time and slowing it down by two, then double time should be pretty self-explanatory. The beat or the count is not is still not given to anything else, but we're putting the kick and the snare on, a, uh, on an eighth note grid. So altogether, we have double time to full time to half time. In this sense, the terms full time, half time, and double time are a representation of what the backbeat is, what, what the backbeat or the value of the backbeat is. Uh, yeah, I really don't think there's a different way to, to word that. It's the value of the backbeat. What what notes are getting the value of the backbeat, not the count. This changes the perceived tempo of the song without ever actually leaving the tempo. Because all you're doing is doubling the speed or having the speed. And so you don't really actually need to leave the tempo. And this is useful for a lot of different reasons. So the first reason, and the one that would probably be most common in the music that at least that I make, uh, is impact. Yeah, it's, it's impact. 
if I'm in full time and I switch to half time, suddenly there's a little bit more weight to what's going on. And you'll hear this all the time in music. Uh, if you've ever heard any song and it, uh, in electronic, uh, in the electronic genre, if you ever heard any song that starts out with like a fora on the floor um, and then goes into having the kick snare pattern. You've heard music that does this all the time. And obviously with everything else going on, it's a, it, it would be a lot more impactful. By doing this, I'm, I'm kind of setting up the brain for this, like this four on the floor pattern, this backbeat, this one, two, three, four. And then when we go into it, uh, suddenly that backbeat isn't there anymore. It's the one, three, one, three. Uh, metal songs do this a lot and breakdowns. Although kind of have like a full time a full time thing going on. Let's let's do a little pattern. I'm gonna do a little pattern. So just bear with me. I'm I'm gonna have a little fun with it, at least you know might as well. All right. So like a, a metal breakdown might do something along these lines. And so there's a little bit of an impact there because while the kick rhythm didn't change and in, in, in a metal song this would also be like the chug rhythm of the guitar um, and the bass that rhythm didn't change where I'm placing the snare has changed and that changes the way that the listener perceives the rhythm that they're hearing you know you're expecting it when you switch you're expecting the snare to hit here and then it doesn't and you have to wait a little bit and so there's a little bit of like a tension release situation going on but mostly it's just that perception of the rhythm changes because of where the snare is being placed. So that's one reason is for impact and a, a change in perception. The other reason to kind of, the only other reason to know these terms is to figure out what kind of feel you want, right? Um, if I was writing a polka track, I wouldn't write it in half time. I'd probably write it in double time. If I was writing a house track, I wouldn't write it in half time. I'd write it in full time. But if I was writing a dubstep track, I wouldn't write it in full time. I'd write it in half time because dubstep is always at 140, but the, the kick and the snare are always on the one and the three. It's always written in half time. And then, of course, you know, the last reason is everybody's favorite thing in the world uh, for drum fills. Temporarily changing the feel uh, as you're transitioning into the next phrase. Also, knowing these terms, if you like write uh, like multiple genres of music, if you want to write a song, that switches genres, you know, kind of understanding the, this concept uh, is is helpful. I've used, I've I've switched from full time to half time in a few of my tracks. Here, I'll just show you a couple of the tracks that I've used this concept in, or at least like actively used them. Uh, this is my song "We've Got a Problem." I was writing it uh, for a competition when I was at Icon for uh, I think it was the twenty. It was either the twenty seventeen or the 2018 countdown prom promo. They came to Icon and they were like, hey, we want your students to participate in this competition to, you know, write a song for our promo. And, you know, here are the samples that we want them to use. They have to use at least one of these samples. And then here are some other samples that are, you know, optional. And that was the year that they did the whole alien invasion promo with like Churdley's. And I actually, I I was one of the winners of the competition, so this song was actually in the promo, which is actually pretty cool. This is the first song that I ever used the concept of like switching from halftime to full time in a dubstep track. Right here. I think I made that decision because I, well, honestly, I, I was just experimenting, but I felt like it, it helped that section a little bit more because it was just kind of this sound going. Um, and rather than changing the rhythm of the sound, I, I thought, why don't I uh, change the, you know, why don't I go to full time for this bar and make it feel a little bit faster so it ends in your mind a little bit quicker, more happens. Um, the other one that I used this concept in was uh, Space Bop, which... Uh, was kind of it was me messing around with like the, the same type of rhythmic motif I really kind of messed around with like what would happen if I just kind of jammed on the drums in this song it's a it's a glitch hop song or a glitch hop-esque 
not esque. Uh, it's in that BPM range. Yeah, at one point I I was like, hey, let's go to halftime. Right here. All right, so you feel the what I was talking about with impact there, right? So like I'm in fault time for the whole song, um, but I've already gotten the audience used to this this rhythmic motif. This, I've already I've done that over and over and over again, and really the only thing that's changed under that are, is the drums or like other background elements. Um, and this is the first like real major change that you'll notice in the song after having listened to the first drop, the break, and then like this section of the drop. Because of that, it grooves a little bit differently as well because the snare is not hitting on the on the three and the four. So even though that uh, on on the two and the four, so even though that count is still there, you're feeling it a little bit differently. What I'm gonna do today is instead of write a track, I might still do that, but in, I think. It's more beneficial to kind of show you show you the concept in action by writing kind of like just a simple rhythm with a bass and then writing the drums around that um, and mostly focusing on the drum writing process and what I'm thinking. Yeah, just mostly focusing on the drum writing process and using that to switch from halftime to full time to double time and, and where we're going to do that and why we're going to do it, where we do it. I'm actually going to pause the recording really quick um, so then I can turn my fan on. Um, and not feel like dying. And then um, I'm, I'll write like a, a basic like dubstep rhythm, even with the kick and the snare. And then we'll go in and talk about uh, halftime, full time, double time, where we want to do that. All right, I have returned and I have a nice little rhythm. <laughs> So we have this basic rhythm, and this is normally something that I, like, this is what I would start out with if I was writing a track. This basic idea here, maybe I'll change the sounds here and there, um, which we're not going to do today, but let's kind of have, this is what I have in mind, right? We have this halftime. I want to hear it in all of the different, I want to hear it in, oh, we heard it in halftime, I want to hear it in full time. <laughs> And then uh, let's hear what it sounds like in double time. You know, see if double time is even usable. Uh, uh, maybe in some aspects, some some sections, right? Okay, so we're gonna go back to halftime. We know that we're gonna be in halftime most of the time because uh, we're writing a dubstep track, right? But let's see. You know, uh, so we have. What, this is eight bars? All right, maybe I can do full time here because I have this and then maybe in the second half because we have that and then I'm gonna duplicate this again. So we have a 16 bar kind of loop here. I have this idea in mind of doing it doing the thing, uh, sorry, doing the thing of doing it, uh, that thing that they do in like, uh, when they do like hard style, the trap. I think it should be the full four bars. And actually I kind of feel like this should be like the beginning of the drop. And also, you know, to like add impact, I'd maybe take out the sub. Let's turn it up to 150 so that this uh, this feels faster. The halftime isn't as slow, but it still has uh, a bigger impact. All right, so I think like this is the best example of like go, uh, how to use full time versus halftime. The double time stuff doesn't really work with 
you know, dubstep per se, you can't, I mean, this, this works decently fine. This section, I'm not feeling this whatsoever. I might leave this as halftime because this would probably be like a, you know, a full bar sound transition. But we have like a 16 bar loop um, that starts out with uh, a, a teaser, you know, uh, one way that someone might do this or a, a fake out drop. One way that someone might do this is by just having, having it be the kick. <laughs> And that's one way to, to create the impact, but also this is a great way to create the impact as well. And you know what? I actually just might make this full time instead of using double time. And then let's, you know, we're already in half time, but let's make that way more dramatic uh i don't know what this would even be called but see how like way too slow that was you know there, it's we're already in half time when we you know because it's dubstep so that was not really a helpful a helpful impact tool or even a helpful rhythmic tool. It's too slow. The kick and the snare are too, a little bit too far apart for it to groove in any sort of way. But you know what I could do is have this be a transition into going into full time for the second half. And then we'll go into half time at the end. Kind of like what we did with metric modulation where we went from dubstep to glitch hop and then the metric modulation breaks were, uh, you know, vice versa. The, Metric modulation breaks in the dubstep section were full time. I went to full time because I was going into glitch hop. Uh, technically, yeah. And then in the glitch hop section, the the metric modulation breaks were in half time. Same same concept. <laughs> Yeah, pretty short one today. Uh, I hope I was able to clear some uh, things up or, you know, introduce this concept to you. You've probably heard all of these things before if you've ever listened to music, but just never knew exactly what to call it. Yeah, it's a super helpful tool. I use it all the time and I don't really think there is much else to say. Uh, you know, do all the things that you're supposed to do, you know, do the do the sharing and the liking, uh, leave a comment. Let me know other things that you want me to talk about, things that you're confused about that maybe I may be able to explain in a different way to clear things up. I'm very good at doing things like that. So uh, just let me know. Next week, I'm gonna be doing, um, I'm gonna be making a drop, but uh, in, in one hour. So you get to see like my whole process of drop making, but also, uh, the sheer anxiety of having a time limit and how that affects me uh, in my mental state. Anyway, peace.